space. Back with another episode of This Functional Family, not Dysfunctional. This Functional Family. Listen, if you are new to our channel, please hit that subscribe button. Please hit the like button. And please engage in these conversations with us. Drop a comment. Let us know your thoughts, your feelings. And if you're listening on an audio platform, please make sure you follow us, share this, like this, um, so we can grow our viewership. Let's do it. Let's do it. Oh, man. What are we scoffing about today? I want to talk about... No, what you want to scoff about. <laughs> Scoffing. <laughs> I want to talk about... All right, I'm just playing. I want to scoff about... Scoffing is not synonymous for talking, but we'll tell y'all why we use that word. I'll give you another episode, though. We'll give y'all some more history. But I'll, I wanna... I'll Banneker family knows. Banneker family knows. Shout, Shout out to, to Benjamin Banneker. Banneker, man. Greatest high school on the planet. All right, here we go. All right, all right. We scoffing. We scoffing. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Today, I want to talk about... Quarantine. I want to talk about lessons from quarantine. Let's do it. All right. I want to open up with a story. All right. So recently, my car was having some issues, as you know. But it was interesting because for those that don't know, we are from New York. We're from Brooklyn, New York, but we currently live in New Jersey. Mm -hmm. And the area of Brooklyn that we lived around, well, really all of Brooklyn, (laughs) not just the area. All of New York. All of New York, (laughs) but mainly Brooklyn. For those that know, the the roads are just trash. <laughs> just they're terrible, right? Like there's potholes everywhere. There's uh, yeah. areas that need fixtures, and it's it's just bad. They're disrespectful. But in particular, in Brooklyn and yeah. the Bronx, yeah. the roads are just horrible, right? And recently, there was an issue with my car, right? But now that we live in Jersey, a lot of places that we have to go to, we have to get on the road, get on the, the highway. highway. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so a lot of times, it's just like a smooth ride versus mm-hmm. the stop and go and potholes mm-hmm. and all of the mania of New York. Mm-hmm. I didn't know something was wrong with my car because a lot of the driving is on a smooth road here in Jersey. Yeah. But I noticed something over the last few months was that every time we got into New York, when I would get into Brooklyn, I would hear this like, kunk, 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 kunk. <laughs> Annoying. Like, what is yes. that sound? I can't hear it. can't figure it out. Took the mechanic. First guy couldn't figure it out. I'm like, dang, what's going on? But I noticed when I get back out to Jersey, I didn't hear the sound anymore. So I started like talking to Amanda like, Do, do you hear that sound we heard when we was in Brooklyn? We might you know, be taking the girls to see my mother-in-law or my mom or my dad or something like that. And it's just like, I don't hear it mm-hmm. when we're in Jersey. Yeah. Then a revelation hit me. Talk spicy. Talk crazy. Let me can I, can I talk spicy? Go dummy. Quick? We didn't know there was a problem mm. until we hit the roads that were rougher. It's crazy. While we were on a highway that was smooth, <laughs> yeah. it couldn't expose the problem with mm. the car. Mm. But the sound was exposed. Mm-hmm. On a rougher rough road. Roads. Yeah. That feels like what quarantine has been, this pandemic, mm. right? And I don't want to minimize some of the tragedy that some people have experienced, right? Like, right. I think there are tons of people who are close to us, mm-hmm. who have lost family, loved ones. I've lost family um, in particular during this time. Yeah. So I don't want to minimize, like, some of the, the tragedies. Absolutely. I don't want to talk about more of, like... The blanket issues that quarantine yeah. has, has caused, right? And I realized that something about this rough patch in mm. most of our lives has exposed and uncovered, just like the car, mm-hmm. that there's some things that we didn't know were wrong. Yeah. There are couples that are figuring out that there's something wrong because of this rough road and having to be home with each other. There's parents and kids figuring out, oh, we don't like each other as much as we thought <laughs> because of this rough road. And there's people realizing they 
are at a bad job they didn't know they didn't yeah. like until they got a chance to not be at that job and it's like oh it exposed that's what quarantine has been right yeah. and 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 that that story just yeah it resonates really deeply but i see you want to jump in because you look like you got something to say how do you just got that i got something to say like <laughs> always got something to say so the National Law Review put out some stats that... Ooh, hit them with the statistics. Talk spicy. Talking facts, bro. Facts. <laughs> so the National Law Review put out some statistics that by mid-2020, the amount of couples that were interested in divorce increased by 34%. 34%. And that's just mid-2020, mind you. Right. Pandemic hit at least in our nation March. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. by mid twenty twenty, that's only a few weeks. Right. right and there was right. a thirty four percent spike for couples that sought or were interested mm. in divorce. Wow. Not only that. Talk spicy. Twenty percent of couples who are married for at max. Let me say that again. At max five months, mm-hmm. aka five months or less. <laughs> right. 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 They sought divorce compared to 11% in 2019. So it went up 9% wow. from, a, from the previous year. For people that haven't even been married for half a year. Not even half a year. So those rough roads, like you said, Listen. they get in. There's something about trying times, yeah. right, that really uncovers what people are made of. Mm. Right? It's, it's, you don't. And I, I feel like I'm getting real yeah, MLK. Shout out to shout out to, to to Martin Luther King. <laughs> but you know, like the character of a person is not determined through mm-hmm. easy times; it's yeah. determined through, through difficult times. And it, that's quoted a lot. But it, it's it's like that, not just in like challenges that are social or mm-hmm. political, but it's like that in family, marriage, parenting, yeah. right? Like who you are comes out when y'all go through tough times. Yeah. When I'm if I'm married, the man that I am really is exposed if my family hits adversity. Mm. Do I step up Mm -hmm. and find ways to keep my family um, at peace and provided for and all this other good stuff? Or do I become this toxic person that's really mad at me Mm. because I haven't figured out a way, but because I I have these unresolved issues of how to handle problems, I now lash out and take it out on Mm. my children or my wife and vice versa, Right. Right. There are so many like kids and parents that are realizing like, dang, this tough time, this tough patch has exposed a lot of character flaws, mm. a lot of communication flaws, a lot of uh, uh, discontent with where you are mm-hmm. in Just life. Stuff. Just stuff. But it's getting exposed because of the rough road. Yeah. It's that conk, conk, conk. Whoa, what's the conk, conk, conk? You know what I'm saying? So, But I think like just going back to what you said, a lot of what... The not just the nation, but the world. Of course, there are like cultural differences mm-hmm. and like just differences based on like the regions that you live in. But many of us dealt with some of the same just stuff. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like we encountered the same fears, the same difficulties, just applied to our lives in different ways. So, like, I think it's important for us to at least address for a brief moment how we like coped. With some of the blanket fears that everyone was facing at the onset of the pandemic. Gotcha. You know what I mean? I mean, I would, I don't know if you're asking me to just, but I'll go first. I think one of the first things that probably come to mind, whether you were a person of faith or not, whether you are married or not, whether you're an entrepreneur or working, I think one of the first things that just naturally happened is fear. Mm. I think fear was felt by a lot of people. Because mm-hmm. there were so many people close to you that you could never expect to lose their lives that were either getting really sick or losing their lives. Right? right? You go to a hospital, you might not be going to the hospital for COVID. Yeah. You might be going to the hospital, you sprained your ankle, <laughs> but then you walk in an emergency room and they're like, uh, we can't even take you right now. This is another hospital about 15 minutes away. You're going to have to go there because our lines are too long or our, our beds are filled up. So yeah. now you have fear being arrested, not to mention the the fear that some media outlets mm-hmm. have impugned upon people by fake news, <laughs> fake news or exaggerated statistics or, yeah. you know, I'm not getting like conspiracy theorists 
theorist here, but like it was just so much. It was so much information coming in at once. It was hard. That to, fear was natural. Like yeah. you going outside, like if I breathe, will I die? Yeah. Right? Like, can I like is it airborne somebody? or is it, is it, it through it the membranes? Like it was so <laughs> much unknown. Exactly. Yeah. So I think the first thing that was a blanket feeling: pastors, parents, educators, yeah. people in the tech industry. The blanket feeling was fear. Mm -hmm. What are we going to do? How do we cope? Am I going to be alive tomorrow? (laughs) (laughs) You know what I mean? Um, What else do you think was something that like everybody kind of felt at the same time as well during all of this quarantine and pandemic shutdown? I think it not just like the fear of death, but like provision. Like look how unemployment Mm. spiked. You Mm. know what I mean? And people who... (laughs) not only lost their jobs, but who, for us also, who had to transition into having our children home with us all day. And how are they going to receive remote instruction? And now I can't go to work because I can't, my kid is too young to stay at home by themselves. And yeah, man, Yo, it was out, just. Shout out, quick shout out to the parents. Shout you know. out to us, Shout out man. to the parents. Not we've us, been, but like. We've been wilding during this, like <laughs> us, not yeah. the man they show, but us, like as parents, because. I know, I know kids, for those that don't know, I also um, work in education, and well, sometimes we on Zoom, and I know I see kids who are at their parents' job That's crazy. while they're on, and the parent has to bring them to work every day because yeah. of what they do for a living yeah. or the business they run. Yeah. So it's like, parents been killing, you know what I mean? Becoming like bivocational in terms <laughs> of tri-vocational, quad-vocational, <laughs> right? Like just in terms of the amount of hats you had to start willing to, wearing. So just, you know, shout out to parents. A little bit of encouragement to, f- for you. Yeah, I agree with you there. I would like to, like, talk about... So, like, how did we cope? Because now that it's, like, so... Like, we're moving away from it. We're getting more herd immunity and things like that. Or people are just figuring out more pr- pr- proactive and preventative mm-hmm. ways from getting sick and mm-hmm. things like that. Whether it's through natural causes or... You know, scientific research causes, whatever. Mm-hmm. People are figuring it out. Yeah. Right? We're starting to open up a little bit. But how did we cope? Right? I think the first word or the just the first thing that comes to mind is like, we had to get creative. Creative. We mm. had to get really creative because it's mm. like, we are literally home all day. And at the, <laughs> like... The furthest yeah. we went was to Whole Foods yeah, or to the like first get, few months. to get groceries. We it weren't was... going to see family, even if they were a ten minute drive away. We yeah. weren't. We were barely taking the girls for a walk around the block, and it's just like we didn't know the magnitude. Like we just didn't. No one knew how to handle it, so yeah, we, like no true. one wanted to take a risk. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I think we just had to get creative. Like. Mm-hmm. I was ordering stuff from Target that is mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. Uh, paint and uh, just arts yeah. and crafts and stuff to keep the girls busy because like they can't go to school they like they just have to stay busy. It's not fair to them that they can't mm-hmm. go to the park in the summertime or yeah. like I can't mm-hmm. take them outside. Like how do we keep them sane? You know what I mean? Yeah. They don't as as grown ups as as adults like we understand a little bit more of and probably adapt better to. Just how to deal with what was going mm. on, like even in the midst of fear and confusion and worry and right. all of these just like weighty emotions, our poor babies don't know what's going on. Like yeah. they they, just know they, they got get it. Like, okay, all of a sudden, and what the heck is happening? Home, what do you mean? There's no more school for the yeah, rest of it. Like yeah. they there was so much confusion. So it's like okay, they don't. How do we keep them sane? Yeah, how do Creativity, we? Creativity. Right? That's a good one. I would say. <laughs> It almost sounds antithetical, but they actually work hand in hand. Mm-hmm. Um, structure. Mm-hmm. I think, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think creativity I, yeah, yeah. was important in terms of how we're going to adjust to certain things. <laughs> but I also good. think creating structure was just as important. Like, mm-hmm. okay, we don't have to go to school no more, but let's figure out what time of the day we're going to do math. Yeah. What time of the day we're yeah. going to work on our letters, our numbers, our colors. What time of the day are we going to just relax and play and chill as a family? What time of the day are you going to have screen time, right? Mm-hmm. So we created like our own in-home school system yeah. that um, started to, I guess, sh- sh- create a normalcy for the kids. Yeah. So that in spite of the tragedy, they have consistency at least in their domestic situation mm-hmm. so that it doesn't create 
chaos in and outside of the house. It's like at least inside of the house. I don't know what's going on outside, but at least yeah. inside of the house, they know what to we got some structure. So that's what we had yeah. to do, sit down, make a schedule, stuff like that. But I also think there's some like deeper aha moments, right? Yeah. Some deeper like takeaways. And I say that for me personally. Sorry. Another quick nugget. And not structure just for the kids being out of school, but structure for us, for ourselves facts, so that facts, we didn't facts, go facts, crazy. Because it's like, you were still working remotely. Yep. I wasn't. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I wasn't going into the office anymore. So it's like, okay, I'm not just going to sleep until 12 o'clock yeah, and yeah. wake up and like be burdened by depression or anxiety or confusion. Like, okay, let me still wake up mm-hmm. at 9 o'clock. Let me make, you know, wake up at a decent hour. Let me not be in my pajamas all day. Let me do, have some sort of structure for myself also so that I don't go crazy. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I think it was important yeah. for, for and us to parent, do that for ourselves. Parents got to take care of themselves too. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, that's a big lesson in general, right? But we'll get to some of like the transferable lessons a little bit mm-hmm. later. But I think for me, um, what I was saying was about the like aha moment is what I would yeah. call them, or my like just takeaways from from quarantine. I have two. Okay. And the first for me was, and I don't know if you will agree here, but I just realized how much I like y'all. Oh. Like it wasn't like I'm so busy mm-hmm. that being I, I wasn't even going to my studio at one point. So it was like, yeah. Let me sit back, let me relax, and let me just see what's going on. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh. After a couple of weeks, they not annoying me, driving me crazy. <laughs> they not mad. They not mad at me. Okay. So my personal takeaway was like, through rough and good times, mm-hmm. these are the people I want to rock with. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, the girls are not driving me nuts, though they're doing kid things. Yeah. I'm not like feeling psychotic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're we're coping with the general issues of the world mm-hmm. but i'm not feeling psychotic as a parent like oh god what are we gonna do yeah. right i realized i like y'all like long term not just i got love for y'all mm-hmm. but i like hanging with y'all yeah and that was important for me that was really really important for me so i really hope that that's something that a lot of other people can say mm-hmm. or even if you realize you don't like people <laughs> like your brothers your sisters your fathers your sons your daughters your mothers whatever getting getting to the to the root of why Mm. At least if that rough road got your car, clunk, 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 clunk. Yeah. now you at least have identified there's a problem. I got to do something about it. So I think that's something for me. The second thing, though, I didn't realize how much I want a hand in my kid's education. Not that I've ever neglected mm. mm-hmm. their education, but because our days are so busy, for the most part, when we come home, we're helping them with whatever schoolwork yeah. their school gave them. Yeah. Now I can hear what their school is giving them. Mm-hmm. Plus say, okay, well, I think this is missing in the curriculum. Yada, yada, yada. Let me add this. Let yeah. us teach this. Let us import this in the mornings while they have this class in the afternoon. Yeah. I just like hearing mm. what the teachers are talking about. Hearing what the, what's going on in the classroom and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like that, that started to get really fun for me or at least... Fruitful. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think those are my big two is I like y'all <laughs> and and I, 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 I like having a hand in what my kids are learning. So my first one I have two also. Okay. Well, my first one is really similar. Um I like my kids. Like I like y'all too. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like the feeling is mutual. Oh, yeah. The oh, feeling is mutual, kid. And why is like so Brooklyn, like why is she talking to me like this? You could just tell me you like me and call me kid. I like you, bro. So like, wow, that's <laughs> crazy. So like, all right. So the shutdown happened March 2020. Yeah. I had just finished my undergrad degree in December 2019. Mm-hmm. So it kind of goes back to the point that you made of um, like just the opportunity to be at home with the kids. Because sometimes I was getting out of class at nine o'clock. You and the girls were driving to come pick me up. Mm-hmm. It's bath and bed for them when we get home. Mm-hmm. And like there's not really any quality time being spent and I miss that. It's like Facts. they're getting older, but I'm not really Yeah. Just you know what I mean? Like yeah, just being able to spend reason. more time. Yeah, yeah. It meant um, a lot to me too. Because it was just like, okay, an hour in the morning getting them dressed, getting them breakfast, then dropping them to school, and then by the time we get home, 
it was about another hour at max yeah. dinner right. bath bed so just having just the opportunity to hang out with them you know what i'm yeah. saying and just learn them and see who they are mm. as people Woo. you know what i mean like they have like they're little That's heavy they're little but they're people and they have these big personalities and just being able to like see it develop and watch it just watch it happen in front of my eyes was just a blessing. You know That's what I mean? Heavy. That's heavy. And not only that, I think another takeaway for me was that it taught me not to be complacent. Because as I finished my undergrad degree in December, I was torn between whether I wanted to transition into like finding a master's program or go on a job search. And eventually, because of the pandemic... I was let go of my job. I was let go right. from my job, right? right? So I didn't have to like... Shout outs to the survivors. Maybe we here. We here. You know I didn't have to like... Get to the bag. Figure Make it, it happen. Because we got to talk because you talking about school. So now I'm listen, ready listen, for listen. you to get into this. Why you dress... For those that's listening on audio platforms right now, she's sitting here in front of me with a whole purple cap and gown. She got her hood on. That's yes. they call it for the masses. Yes. The hood. Yes. Yeah, I ain't yes. got my masses yet. It's coming soon, but... You 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 gotta explain why are you dressed like this today? Because usually we dripped in our free to soul. So I'm trying to understand. What's I mean, happening. I got the free to souls underneath. What's but happening? Then? I just think, man. Like I said, I just finished my undergrad degree in December of 2019. Recently graduated with my master's, 2020. I missed two commencement ceremonies because of this pandemic. So you're just going to walk around? I'm going to just wear my cap and gown whenever I feel like it. Like, <laughs> if, if it's a Wednesday morning and I want to put this cap and gown on, I'm going to put it on. It, yeah, man. Listen. It's just I'm just paying homage to everybody that, you know, wasn't able to celebrate from, like, pre-K all the way up to gr- doctorate degrees. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, it's such... It's a loss. And for me, it meant so much because, like, I got, I finished my undergrad degree when I was 30. You know what I mean? Like, life happened where I didn't graduate, quote unquote, on time. Mm-hmm. And for me, it was a big accomplishment, like, wanting my kids to be able to to be there to see mommy did this. And me just being proud of the, accom- the accomplishment that I, you know. Then you hit them with the Drizzy Drake, the back to back. Yeah, the back to back, and, and I couldn't. I right missed after, no. both. I'm like, all right, yeah, all right. I, I missed. I I'm missed, like, I missed. How you missed two walkings? Like that's messed. I missed up. my undergrad at the Barclays Center. Yo, now I'm missing my master's from El- you not can't missing. Walk it. two years in a row. Well, two, I'm gonna just keep getting degrees, degrees until you I'm gonna walk. keep. Whoa, I'm about whoa, to. Whoa, whoa. I'm gonna keep going, bro. Like. So you just it. gonna keep breaking pockets till Doctor Amanda Robinson till you get the chance to Oh yeah, man. That might I be that might be it. the plan. That's a little gangster. I ain't gonna hold you. Like, I'm gonna walk for one of these degrees. I'm gonna walk for one of these degrees. <laughs> like sure is ridiculous. Yeah. But yeah, man. I respect it. I respect it. I mean, don't be walking around our house with no <laughs> cap and gown randomly. Um don't be walking around in our cap and gown randomly, bro. I'm I might. I might. I can't promise you that I won't. I just promise you it won't happen often. Okay. All right. Well, moving on. Something else that came to mind for me was what are some, because I know, I know this is probably true for everybody, right? Mm-hmm. But let's just talk about us because that's what we here to do. Yeah. What are some of the, not like the aha moments or takeaways, but what are some of the things we started to think about differently during the pandemic? For that me, like is gonna stick. Yeah, I like, think off the rip, the first the first thing that I think we started thinking about was our health, mm-hmm. right? Um, I was already like making sea moss gel. Yeah, facts. Um, it was a uh, moss chick. Yeah, facts. like fresh, homemade, organic sea <laughs> moss gel. Um, so just like not knowing, <laughs> again, going back to not knowing what to do, but just knowing. You at least, at the very least, you want to be in optimal health, right? So like, yeah. let's take out, let's take all the vitamins, let's take all of the cold pressed juices, let's do all of the things that we can do to like take preventative measures to mm-hmm. avoid, like God forbid, if we ever did um, test positive, which thank God we haven't, but if if we had, at least mm-hmm. we knew that we did our best to like combat it. You know what I mean? Right, right. You so give that, your body a fighting chance. Absolutely. There's so many people actually who, you know, God rest their souls, but yeah. who went in, but they had like previous chronic conditions, yeah. which made it much harder to fight off right. the virus or fight off infection. 
um, from the virus. Um, so yeah, that, that's a big deal. Not to mention like just working out. Remember we was doing um, insanity workout yeah, with, the, with girls. the kids. <laughs> they was like, oh my god, my legs hurt. <laughs> we was doing sit up workouts with yeah. they was like enjoying just getting to see us exercise yeah. and then like exercise with us. Yeah, I think that man. was super duper fun. Uh, for me, I would say and maybe there's just a man thing, but I don't think so because I think I've seen females and you know everybody really step their game up. Mm-hmm. Or for those who are internalizing this time as a time to step their game up, they've stepped their game up. Mm-hmm. Finance. Um, I think sure. that I was already like investing into like cryptos. Mm-hmm. I already had like you know a stock portfolio mm-hmm. like TD Ameritrade. I already was putting money away into you know, stash mm-hmm. for like ETFs and stuff yeah. like that. And we're going to do another episode on... on, on um, we'll scoff about finance. Wealth and finance. <laughs> yeah, things like that. I was already, you know, doing those things. Yeah. But I think, one, I started to educate you, you more on things that mm-hmm. you were not aware of. Yeah. But I also started to learn a lot more discipline with it. Mm. Before, it was just like, oh, we, I did it for like not like... It was like nominal. Mm. Oh, yeah, just to say, yeah, yeah I got a little stocks. Yeah. Now it's like I actually have a plan and I actually (laughs) invest on a timetable, but it started with the pandemic. You know what I mean? Like you losing your job, um, Mm -hmm. losing out on work and we still having, you know, to take care of what we have to take care of in terms of being parents. And I just said, you know, it's time to like just be smarter. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You're doing these things and you have some groundwork, but let's be smarter. So I shifted up my, you know, what my life insurance looked mm-hmm. like, increased my life insurance and just a bunch of different things that this time made me think through differently. And speaking of finance, yeah, that I leads w- to. I was actually about to transition. I said that that goes actually well into un- entrepreneurship. entrepreneurship. Oh, okay. Yeah, we're on the same page. Because <laughs> uh, like Free the Souls wasn't birthed from the pandemic. It was pre-pandemic, but it caused us to look at it differently because like you said, We lost out on one stream of income. So it's like, okay, how do we make sure that if a situation like this arises again, that we are setting ourselves up to never have to depend on outside sources? Right. Like, we are self-sufficient. We don't have to become government. Right. And that's not to say to, like, not work a nine to five. Like, if if you have a job that you love and a field that you love, but don't limit yourself. Like, don't box yourself into, like, more than just like one stream of income, but just have a system set in place that you don't. If one thing fails, at least you have something else. Like yeah, you, I I'll take it even further. Mm-hmm. I'll take it and say, creating something that you don't have to have dependency on somebody else's dream. Mm-hmm. Like yeah, a lot of us work for someone else's vision or life plan. Yeah, and. Rightfully so. Not everybody can be a CEO, yeah. right? Everybody that's doesn't have dreams obvious, of entrepreneurship. That's an obvious thing. Yeah. But for those that this pandemic did expose some like burning passion to become entrepreneurial, you got to take hold to that. Yeah. And you got to realize like you don't want to live your life depending on mm. somebody else. Because when you lost your job, it made me think like, oh, shoot, though I make a decent amount of money. Yeah. I need to compensate for that. Mm-hmm. How do we do that? Okay, we got to think smart about strategies, marketing, things right. like that. And it just was like, well, well, we don't need to lose a job to realize <laughs> this is something we can do. Yeah. You know what I mean? And who, if you out there, just know, like, just create something for yourself that can continue to bring in income. Mm-hmm. Be smart with your money. Mm-hmm. Continue to... I don't want to make this a financial episode because we got one coming up that I think we're going to dig into a little bit deeper. Mm-hmm. But just keeping in mind to not solely to put don't put all your eggs in one basket yeah, is probably yeah, yeah, yeah. what I what I would like to say. Um, if you had to talk to the people about like a closing word mm-hmm. about the pandemic, about yeah. the these tough times that we've been in, what would you say to them? Man, I think that just going back to what we were talking about at the beginning of the episode, that we all kind of went through like blanket issues, right? Like 
a lot of us dealt with some of the same things, the same worries, the same fears, the same concerns, um, mm. the same struggles. But mm. even though we were all in the same situation, it taught everyone something different. Even Absolutely. us living in the same household, I, did, I haven't gleaned, like I haven't taken away the same things that you have um, mm-hmm. from the pandemic. So right. I think what I would leave with the listenership is that um, whatever quarantine taught you, don't lose it when things go back to normal. You mic, know what I mean? Mic drop. Let that simmer. Sim simmer. Who Ooh, got, got the, the keys to my bimmer? Like, yeah, man. It's like it taught. Don't go back. Yeah, don't mm. go back. It's like yeah. it taught everybody something different. Um, I mean, look, some of us got the same lessons. Like we have some shared experiences, mm-hmm. um, but there are also things that you got different than I got in. Yeah. Whatever it is that it taught you specifically, just because there's herd immunity and just because they're allowing indoor dining and just because, you know, certain masks are not required in certain places if you're vaccinated, whatever it is, just because things are slowly creeping back into some kind of sense of normalcy, don't lose those lessons, man. Because Mm, we were shut down for over a year for a reason. Don't. That's a long time to be at home. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Don't lose it. Yeah, I, I agree. I don't even want to like try to like double down. I, I want to double down. I don't want to even try to create another closing point. Yeah. I think that's perfect. If your lesson was taking care of yourself, don't yeah. stop taking care of your health. If yeah. your lesson was, hey, me and my spouse have communication issues. Let's go see a therapist mm-hmm. or let's go pray and see how I pass or whatever. Yeah. Let's get that fixed. Hey, my lesson was I really like investing into my kids' education. Yeah. Let me do more of that. Yeah. My lesson was I'm going to do better with my money because I lost a lot of money because mm-hmm. I lost my job. Don't stop investing. Yeah. Don't stop doing that. I think th- I think that's great advice and that's a great way to, to, to close this quarantine episode. But you yeah, know what time it I is. Man. You know what time it is. Do we got a name? Is it this, this? We're we going to keep rolling three. until we, we gonna, figure it out. This, it this, 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 um, leaders, all the politicians, all the people that were stepping in. I can't forget. Um, I think this this is one position that gets overlooked. People that work registers, people mm. that work in culinary and dining, mm-hmm. um, or that work in like just CVS, but it's yeah. like the register or whatever in the pharmacy. It just gets overlooked that they were risking their lives too. You know what I mean? When we were going to the supermarket and it was super duper crowded. Yeah. Um, Waiting on lines outside. These just people to get have in. to like sanitize the whole yeah. thing before they even, you know, all these people, man. Shout out to you if you made it through this rough season. Yeah. Remember that, you know, we were here for each other. Mm, yeah. And that's what got us don't through. Don't lose that community. As a either. people. Don't lose don't, the community. Don't, don't lose that. So, do you want to go to this, this, this? Let's do it. All right, here we go. It's about to Ooh. get real spicy. All right. You ready? First question. Yep. Would you rather go live for all of our arguments? Go live? Go live. Like Facebook, Instagram, Instagram, YouTube. <laughs> Would you rather go live for all, the all of our arguments? Okay. Or never vacation again? Okay. Wow. For those that, as you know how we do, for those that are listening on audio platforms, we will say our answers verbally. For those that are watching, three, two, one. one. Are we on the same page? Go live. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely go live. This goes back to like our last our last episode. I think we we communicate. We we disagree in a healthy way. Not just that, but I think if it's I think I think to make it spicy, if it is an actual argument. The goal is hopefully, like, even though we're going live, that it still ends in some resolution. Yeah. I don't plan to not make up with you, so that means the <laughs> makeup true. is part of the argument. But never go on vacation? Nah, that's a dub. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> that's a dub. Oh, Jesus. I That'll got hurt places my heart. to go. All right. Would you rather your parents not like me or your closest friends not like me? Alright, ready? I'm ready. Three, two, 
friends. Hey. Oh, we on a roll today. Lovers and friends. Shout out to FM, yo. Luda. Yeah, friends. <laughs> Y'all don't mean nothing to me. I'm just playing. <laughs> hey, big dog. I know y'all mean a lot to me. We have but, amazing friends. And I yeah, can't I imagine do. them not liking you. But, but then, though, like. If they don't like you, then. I'll just. Yeah, yeah I'll take that. Oh, yeah. But my parents, I love them too much. You don't like it. You're going to be a divorce on mommy. I'm just saying. I wouldn't leave you because my mom said to. But that would just mean a it, lot. Yeah, it would hurt more. Weighty. Yeah. All, All right. right. Last but not least. Would you rather. Give up search engines or social media. Mm. We writing for a long time. Ready? Yep. Tres, dos, uno. uno. Oh, we three for three today. Oh, we trying to make up for that other Ain't episode nobody. who was yeah. over three. <laughs> yeah, man, I just feel like the way that social media is, the direction that it's going, like it is in its, like it's a search engine. Like CNN has an Instagram page. Uh, it's a news outlet. Yeah. yeah. Not just that. I don't like that question. That question didn't really have a lot to do with family. I like it to do with family and lovers. And like... <laughs> All right. We'll give you more family questions with the next distance. But yeah, search engines, that was easy for me because, easy. like you said, social media is becoming a news outlet in and of itself. So anything I don't know, I'm going to find somebody's Instagram page that do know. <laughs> oh, man. Yo, Thank y'all for rocking with us, man. Don't forget, hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. Give us some love. Don't, don't like intimidate. And you see this denim jacket, man. This Free the Souls Clothing. Free the Souls Clothing. Dot com. Yeah, man. Follow us on IG, Free the Souls Clothing. And follow this functional family. Oh, yeah. I could. Um, follow it. This is the podcast. Follow all of it. Yeah. We love (laughs) y'all. Till next time. Peace.